Welcome to the CAD Office Training Guide Series for FDOT Connect. I am Randy Roberts, CAD Application Support Specialist 4. And today I will be going through the FDOT Connect Traffic Plans Course Guide. In this series of videos, I will take you step by step through each exercise from the course guide. Today we will start with Chapter 5 of the course guide Lighting Plans. Topics covered in this chapter will be using place cell group to place light poles and draw conduit tool. The objective of this chapter is to provide an overview of tools that are within the traffic planning application that will allow you to place cells and to draw conduit to FDOT design standards for lighting plans. The normal workflow for creating lighting plans is to utilize pole placement from a AGI 32 design. The designer will reference in the AGI file and place the light poles on top of the design. Currently there is no automated workflow to convert the AGI poles to FDOT light poles. This chapter demonstrates the tools that are available. On the FDOT ribbon, some of the tools that can be used for a lighting plan are in the traffic planning suite, namely the place cell group and place conduit. So an overview of place cell group, which is an application that can be used to place cells along an alignment element, such as light poles, control boxes, and other cells related to lighting design. So an overview of place cell group to start with, has two main sections. It has a group pattern section and a location section. So let's start with the group pattern. The save pattern and load pattern. This function allows the designer to save a one, two, or three pattern cell. And it's mainly used for painted pavement messages. The save pattern contains the payout of data that it was created with. When recalled, the designer can place the pattern without having to browse through the database. Cell selection with preview. The default active cell is the center. This is the one that you would use to start with. And the top and bottom contain a toggle, which would make them active also. The red button allows the designer to browse the pay item database for the desired pattern. A preview window is supplied showing the selected cell. The designer must enter in an offset distance from the selected element. When the top and bottom cells are active, there is an additional control that becomes active, the upstream and downstream spacing, which controls the distance. And this is measured from the center to center of cells. Under the location section, element used for cell placement is provides information on the source element used for placement. Cell placement range. This provides information on the source element such as station values if element is in alignment. If it is not in alignment, the information is the begin and end coordinates. The buffer controls allow the designer to place cells at any starting or end point along the source element. Spacing and angle. The designer can control whether the cells can be placed once or incrementally along the source element. The angle control allows options of relative, absolute, and perpendicular. If you change the spacing to increment, the data box becomes active, allowing the designer to enter a spacing distance for the cells, mostly used for RPMs or light poles. Direction reverse. This will reverse the selected element's direction, which affects how the cell rotates about the source element. If you find your cell is not rotating the direction you expect, toggle this option on and the preview will change rotation of the cell in the preview mode. Associate alignment with element. When toggled, it will place all patterns and cells associated with the selected alignment. To select 
an alignment, click on the green selector button to pick your alignment. The alignment name will populate in the select text box right here. This is required so that your quantity reports will be accurate. And there is also, if you accidentally placed your cells without toggling on the associate alignment and associating it with alignment, you can go back and blanket cover the entire cells that were placed without an alignment. It's very easy to do. Draw pattern. This starts the placement process, which will ask the designer for a source element to use as a reference line. When placing, there is a preview of how the placement will look. If it is not right, the designer can change parameters until the preview looks correct. Left click when you are ready to commit your cells to the drawing. So switching over to place conduit, this tool is used to draw conduit between cells. Example being light poles, pull boxes, etc. The designer selects from a list of five different types of conduit. The PayAtom database controls these options and when drawn the symbology including the PayAtom number is correctly placed. The select pay item is a button and when selected opens up the pay item database allowing the designer to select the desired conduit. When selected the conduit type is listed next to the button. And there is also a history list that you can pull down and reselect. Draw conduit also has the associate alignment with element and as before it's very critical that you select an alignment to have that box populate before you place your conduit. The tools and settings. This tool behaves like a find and replace, but only for pay item numbers. In the rare chance that the pay item number has changed or is incorrect, the designer can type in the current number and the new value and the number will be swapped out in the design file. So you would current value, enter in your number that you want to change with the new value, which is the number that you want to replace it with. Then once you select pay item update, it will scan through the file, find and replace those pay item numbers. So let's start with exercise 5.1, placing light poles. In this exercise, the designer will place light poles using place cell group. In the lighting folder, if you would open up the DSGN LT01 file and located on the F dot ribbon, open up the traffic planning suite and we will be using the place cell group and we only need to use the center cell selection so we do not need to toggle the top and the bottom to make those active. So to select the light pole, select the center cell search button which opens up the pay item database and you can collapse all and then go through and expand the appropriate category or you can come up here in the search and type in the pay item number or name that goes with the cell. In this instance we want a light pole which is pay item number 0715. Hitting enter will not do anything so you do have to hit the search button then hit search and I want to find the 715413 which is right here. Select OK. Notice there is a preview now. So some of the parameters that we need to to change in here is we want to set the offset to 60. We want to set spacing to increment because we want to place more than one. So select increment and we want to um, leave the angle at relative 
that's not how we're going to place them, but I do want to show you something as we go along here on this exercise. Set the begin buffer distance to 250. And we want the increment spacing to be also 250. And go ahead and select the alignment to associate with the light poles. So I left click and then left click again and the alignment name populates into the the box select box here one note is if you in your typical workflow you would have this situation where your alignments are referenced into your design file when that happens this name would be the entire path of that referenced in alignment so yes it would have the alignment name but it would have a lot of information before that name. Do not worry about that because when you do run your quantity reports the name of the alignment will just be reported. The pathing for the reference stent alignment will be eliminated from the report. So you're left with the alignment name itself. So let's go ahead and with these selections made. Select draw pattern. It's asking to select the element. So in this case we're going to just place the light poles off the alignment. And as you can see there's a preview here. And the rotation is not correct. So while we're in preview mode we can make changes in the dialog box that would in real time change the preview. So one thing you don't want to do yet is hit is left click because that will commit it to the file as it appears now and we want to make some changes. So for angle we want to change that to perpendicular. Now you can see that the rotation is correct. If you want to change your buffer you want to um, make it less. Let's change that to 200 and come back to the preview. You can see that all the light poles shifted to the left and the offset distance looks okay. You could modify that if you want. So if everything looks good as far as in the preview mode and you're ready to commit it to the file, go ahead and left click. Notice how they got brighter, which means we're out of preview mode and they have been placed. As you can see around the curve, they have maintained their perpendicular to the alignment. So before we move on to the next exercise, I just want to point out, even though we just inserted light poles for lighting plans and signal plans, you can use the place cell group to place other cells that have pay item information on it. Such as, you know, if we expand the highway lighting, you have load centers, you can have control boxes, any, any cell that you need to place in your design with the desired workflows to do it through place cell group. That way you are assured that the pay item data will be on it and it will be associated with an alignment and that's the way that the CAD office prefers the workflow to go. Okay so next is exercise 5.2 which is draw a conduit. In this exercise the designer will draw a conduit between light poles. This tool draws different types of conduit complete with the correct symbology including pay item numbers. So we're going to continue working in the DSGNLT01 file. We will close the traffic planning tools and we will reopen the traffic planning tools and go to place conduit. First thing we're going to do is associate an alignment. So we're going to reselect the alignment and then left click again. Shows up in the box. And we're going to select 
pay item, which is going to open up the database for us. And we're going to select 630 to 11, which is the first one in the list. See, it populates in the list. And from here, we're just going to select Draw Conduit. And this is, you're drawing free form here. So you can use snaps or whatever method you want to use. And it's just basically left, left clicking the conduit into place. And it just goes about the drawing. I'll go ahead and stop that. But as you can see, it's nothing much to the Draw Conduit tool. It will place it. And let me close the Traffic Planning tools and select the conduit itself. As you can see, it's just, it's one piece. So you have your pay atom. You have your pay atom data here, your description unit of measure, what alignment it's associated to, and your length is up here, 754 feet. And based on this, you're ready to go whenever you are ready to do quantities. Thank you for joining me today for Chapter 5 of the F.Connect for Open Rose Designer Traffic Plans Course Guide.